All right, so after that long and potentially confusing one, I just wanted to kind of overview what we did in that last one, just so you kind of have a better grasp of what happened. So first off, we needed to create a model that is gonna track whether or not a user has confirmed their email. And then we also need a some sort of activation key that's gonna be associated with that model. So we created email confirmed for that. We assigned it to a specific user using one-to-one -one field. We have that activation key. We have It's empty right now. We don't know how to set it quite yet, uh, but it is there. At least something of it is there. It is going to be a hash key. That's why it was originally called hash key. And then we have a Boolean field confirmed whether or not, uh, which will become useful for us later. And then we made a model, two model instance methods. One of them is currently says active user email, uh, which we will send. We'll probably change that later, or at least the name of it. And then we also created a function called email user, uh, which we will also use at some other point, which we have set up right here. Now, all of this is made to make it a little bit easier on us when we want to actually activate a user account. Um, it doesn't have to be done this way. In fact, it can be done in many other ways, but having it all as an instance method, so especially the activate user email, which is what this should say, activate user email, um, especially this one, this should be with an instance method. That way, if we need to resend another activation email, it's a lot easier if it's on an instance method versus being on a view, because we might have a specific view to actually activate the user email, and that's gonna be where it is. And then we introduce this new one called render to string, which essentially takes a text document and applies context to it, which we have here, just like any of our views. All right, so now that we have that, we're gonna jump into doing something slightly easier, which is setting up our email. Now, setting up email is really actually pretty easy to do, assuming that you have an email service already working. Now, you can use Gmail for a certain amount of time, um, but you also have to unlock it. Um, I believe it's something about CAPTCHA, so you'd have to actually Google unlock CAPTCHA on Gmail to actually do that. Um, send me a message if you want to actually see how that's done. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to show you the gist of what you'd have to do is you'll set up email host, email host user, email host password, email port, email use TLS. All right, and we set all of these in uh, our settings file. So wherever our settings file is gonna be, this is where we're gonna set them. And once we set this stuff up, then we will be able to actually send email. Um, another thing is our default from email. You can actually write something here. So coding for entrepreneurs. And then let's just say, I'm gonna put coding for entrepreneurs at Gmail here. So coding for entrepreneurs at Gmail here. And here, this is how I can actually, this will send it out as coding for entrepreneurs and then the email will come up through just like that. Um, so that's how you can do default email email um, addresses with some sort of name in front of it. Um, and now the host stuff, now this is where it would actually connect to that email service. So you can use something called SendGrid, that's sendgrid.net. This is great for transactional emails. So transactional emails would be like user activation. Um, marketing emails, on the other hand, would be like I'm sending marketing information, sales information, a newsletter, stuff like that. Transactional emails are like you have a new notification, um, somebody liked your picture, stuff like that. That's transaction emails. Um, so definitely check out SendGrid. Uh, I believe their .net is also where it's going to be, or if you just Google SendGrid, you'll see it. Uh, this is a pretty solid email service for transactional email. So the email host for them is smtp.sendgrid.net. So if you've ever actually set up Outlook or your iPhone um, and you had to do it with like an exchange account, it's going to be very similar to that. Um, I will put in the SendGrid stuff, but really I'm just going to show you Google's because I think a lot of you will end up using Gmail uh, because it's free where SendGrid, um, I think they have a free tier, but it, overall it's not free. 
it does have some paid tiers as well. And then you would use your username. So in our case, it'd be codingforentrepreneurs at gmail.com. And then your user password, uh, you better hope that my password is not a password. And then, oops, I wrote email pot. I meant to write port, sorry about that. And then the port for Gmail is 587. That's not gonna be true for everyone. You'd wanna contact whatever your email provider is for these last two. So port and use TLS. Um, so this is actually how you will set up email to actually send it. It's really that simple. So now, whenever you wanna send email, like what we do in our models, this right here, will actually send an email. And send email is the function that Django has built into it. Um, so now we're set up for email. It's, that's, that's all you had to do. Uh, it's really simple. Going forward uh, on the settings file, you will see this being something different because I'm gonna actually import a different file to have a password and actually have this work, where right now um, I'm gonna leave it on the video where it's just an empty password and then also on GitHub, you will not see uh, the file that contains the password either, um, just for safety reasons, but we do wanna test it out. So let's actually get into that in the next one.